Greetings, friends and foes, and welcome along to episode 36 of Keep Your Friends Close and Your Animes Closer. I am your anime astrophysicist, as always. My name is Joel. I am, as always, am your anime amateur astronomer with a telescope in his backyard. Uh, my name is Robert. I'm your anime astronaut, Curtis. Get back down here and give me some of that dry ice cream. Have you, been, you managed to get to the moon yet? No. No. The anime moon. If astronauts exist, right. yeah. <laughs> how do they... What Dry ice cream? Explain that. Ice is wet. <laughs> that, that's true. He's got you there. I, I don't know. Checkmate. Checkmate. Astronauts. And a- hashtag astronauts don't exist. <laughs> At me. I don't have Twitter. Um, this is a podcast where we just get together and we watch some anime and then we, we ding dang talk about it. And this week we watched episodes 19, 20, and 21 of Revolutionary Girl Utena. And we're going to talk about that right now. But first, last time on Keep Your Friends Close and Your Anime's Closer... Wasn't quite as husky as it normally was, but uh, Robert, do you have any follow up? Uh, yes, follow up. Um, there, there were two shadows doing the shadowy recappy bits mm. until we started this new arc, and now there's just one. So apparently, apparently the uh, the the um, fans refer to them as A and B, and then the one that we're watching now is C. It's a different voice. So I was right. No, is what we're doing. I was right. I, no. I picked it out. No, I didn't. You said there were four of them. I said that, I said that there were three, and um, Did you? so I'm just going to pat myself on the back. <laughs> Did you? Good job. Second, second prophecy to be true. I'm a uh, prophet. Speaking of prophecies and truths, um, I was wrong uh, about one of my predictions. Last episode, I said I predict that I'm going to get really bored with these coming episodes. Yeah, I was going to call you out on that. <laughs> these are probably my favorite episodes so far. They're, they're fantastic. Uh, I was right about uh, Sayonji returning, and I was right about the Mean Girls starting fighting as well. Um, but yeah, <laughs> this did not go as boring as I uh, expected. Um, oh, and the last thing. We really dropped the ball. Uh, no, that's my follow-up, because I dropped the ball, but yeah, you say it. No, 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 the different thing. You oh. say yours. No, you say yours. <laughs> we dropped the ball in, in something that we should have picked up on and didn't, about um, about Utena. Uh-huh. We've been sort of hinting and, and speculating that Anthe's kind of dodgy and she's in on it in some way or another. Sure. It's basically been confirmed. Oh, why? Because something that none of us seem to have re- re- realised is that in the episode where Akio, her brother, goes up to the castle and speaks to the prince... Yeah. After the end of that uh, whole scene where he's saying, it's almost your time, you're going to awaken all this, he walks off down a hallway and there's light is illuminated from behind. He becomes mm. a sil- silhouette. And down the end of the hall, he's greeted by Anthe, ah. who like greets him, she get, hangs off his arm, he disappears around the corner. And then in the next scene, she returns back to her dorm all tired and Uten is like, where have you been? And she's like, oh, just hanging with my brother. Okay. So she she She's was up in the castle and so, she was there the whole time. So something happens in these three episodes that we'll come back to that... I was going to raise that she's definitely bad. Like, 100% bad. Right. Conf- hashtag confirmed in this, <laughs> yeah. in this episode. Full show. But, um... Well, yeah, and we'll, we'll, we will return to that. Is that all your follow-up? Yep. My follow-up is... And this is because... You know, the, the nature of this is that we record a couple of weeks in advance. So, you know, it's like uh, scheduling and stuff. But I did a big fuck-up two episodes ago <laughs> um, on the initial release of the episode. I put music over us talking and then a big pot of silence... No excuses, I fucked up, um, but we're learning as we go. Oh, this is episode 31. Yep. <laughs> yep, just uh, keep your comments in your pocket. Um, but with that <laughs> antagonistic tone, I think we should... <laughs> no comments. No comments. No, no criticisms. No, no criticisms. No, 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 no. No, please comments. Yeah, no. Please, I desperately need comments. Uh, <laughs> it, was a, it was a room reference. Isn't everything basically just of the course, room? Everything. An adaptation of the room? Yeah. Uh, the room's as real as it gets. Well, I've got a lecture series, a TED, like a series of TED Talks coming up where I relate <laughs> just other media to the room and how the room basically is the progenerator of modern literature. Can't wait. I'll tell you about it later. I'll plug, I'll plug it at the end. Uh, revolutionary Girl Utena abridged. <laughs> Duel 19. Title Song of a Fallen Kingdom. It starts with the old tired prince backstory. Wait! Record scratch! That's not Utena, that's Wakaba! She's got her prince backstory as well now. Uh, she's holding on to her shadow-faced prince, and we don't know who it is, but she's talking about how much she loves him. 
Utina and Wakaba are having a picnic, and Wakaba's made some delish, uh, delicious food with like tiny little octopuses on <laughs> octopus wieners, I think she calls them. Um, and they're interrupted by a boy. His name's Tatsuya Kazami. He's a second year, class D. I don't know why he tells us this, but he does. He hands Utina a love letter, and Wakaba snatches it. She recognizes him as the Onion Prince, a boy that sh- a boy that she had a crush on in elementary school. He doesn't seem to remember her. She's kind of crushed. Later, Utuna asks Wakaba for the letter back so that she can return it to him, not being interested. But Wakaba warns her against his silver tongue and his charm. He hurt her by leaving without a goodbye. Flashback to Wakaba being teased at elementary school, uh, the kids calling her Onion Head. She grabs a nearby boy and says that he's the Onion Prince and he's there to protect her. Cuts present day, uh, she returns his letter back to him, saying that Utuna's not his type anyway. Uh, and he blames her not being interested on her, on her being weird during their introduction. She's upset, but she agrees to reintroduce them. There's a council meeting. They're all talking about love and who they love and how how many people they love and all of this. Uh, Akio and Utena are, uh, are talking with Anthe. Akio says that people can rarely understand the princes in someone else's heart. All love is equal and just as right and legal as any other love. And no one should be ostracized for loving who they love and however they choose to express that love. And it's taken out of context. <laughs> There's like a po- sex positive. Yeah. Like gay people can love people. but uh, <laughs> And then Akio goes, and that's why. And he brings his sister <laughs> uh, So he expresses the wish that for Anthe to find her own prince soon. Uh, Prince is the name for his penis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, w- Wakaba sets up the meeting, um, and U- Onion Prince is late. He meets Anthe and Chuchu, and even Chuchu is charmed by him, which annoys Wakaba. They argue, and Utena points out that Wakaba likes him, which she semi denies before running away embarrassed. He admits that he never forgot about her after all, and he's been awkwardly trying to get close to her with the love letter and stuff. It's kind of a s- silly boy. Uh, he runs off to tell her how he feels, and Utena finds a note in her locker. A challenge? No, it's just Wakaba being pissed at her. Uh, the onion boy approaches Wakaba and he woos her with talk of happiness and her prince feeling for her the way that she does, etc. Uh, she thanks him and runs off to find a prince. He's left confused and saddened that he's not the prince. Uh, where do people go when they're vulnerable like that? Into the abandoned memor- memorial hall, of course. He finds his way without an appointment into the regressivator. He's pretty desperate. He is desperate. He, he, he has no appointment, but he says, Hey, uh, I, th- I heard that this is where you can come if you, if you need counselling. He begins to descend in the elevator. He opens up about his feelings for uh, Wakaba and how he can't bear to think of her being with someone else. But then he stops himself, and the lift stops too. He talks about love winning out in the end and how he'll be there for her when she needs him. And the elevator starts to ascend again. Soji appears and tells him that he's truly a good person, and this is why his past does not lie here. This is no place for someone like him. Wakaba runs home, arriving to see her prince sitting in her room. Her green-haired prince, Sayonji. Holy fuck. What? Two things happened. I know, that was amazing. <laughs> Should we talk about them now? Nah, move on. Move on. <laughs> move on. All right, we'll talk about them in a minute. Duel 20 and the halfway mark. Title. Wakaba's Flourishing. Rumours are circulating about Sayanji's expulsion and return to school. Wakaba returns to her dorm room and has bought some new mugs. She makes coffee as he mopes around, feeling sorry for himself. A dormitory mate uh, knocks on the door and she has to cover by pretending that she was just talking to herself. Uh, They have a lovely evening in each other's company, and then there's a wee montage as Wakaba shuns her friends after school over the next few days. She's still excelling at classes though, really cheerful and doing really well. Utuna notices this and speaks with Akio, saying that it's interesting that she's... uh, She's even looking prettier these days. She says all she's ever wanted is for Wakaba to be happy. Meanwhile, Sayonji's carving a wooden leaf hair clip for Wakaba as thanks for her hospitality. She loves it. He asks her about Anthe, and the black rose is plucked. Mikage arrives at Wakaba's house, and he manipulates and teases Sayonji. He says that he can get him back to school in return for just one little thing. Mikage is Soji. Mikage is his last name? Yeah, Mikage Soji. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> Cut to Wakaba seeing Anthe wearing the leaf hair clip. I guess that was the one thing. Uh, and into the regressivator he, she goes. Oh, yeah, that was the one thing. As soon as I saw her with the hair clip, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Very top, top notch manipulation right there. Uh, she complains in this regre- regressivator about uh, always being in Anthe's shadow for Sayonji's affections. Uh, Wakaba arrives home as Sayonji's packing to leave, but she shows him a new black ring. And she draws his heart sword from him. She fucking bust yeah. yeah, that was upsetting. No. Boom! Dives on him and dra- drags that sword right out of his chest. <laughs> yeah. 
There's a challenge in Utena's locker, the staircase music in the arena. Uh, Utena arrives and is stunned to see who the challenger is. Anthe begs Utena to draw the sword quickly, but she can't bring herself to fight Wakaba. Wakaba lunges forward, narrowly missing Utena. Utena refuses to fight back, but she continues to put herself in the way. Wakaba eventually raises her sword to Utena's throat, saying if she doesn't get out of the way so she can kill Anthe, she'll kill them both. Utena grapples her, tells her, You're my closest friend, and I will save you. And then she swiftly disarms her and slices through her rose with her own sword. Like a fucking badass. Like a both. Can I just say real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Wakaba's uniform was, was really good. Was I really awesome. liked it. Yeah, it was a good I, uniform. Yeah, I enjoyed that as well. Uh, the body is rejected into the health, health fires and Mikage decides to keep Sayonji around all the same as a laugh. Because he's a fool. Yeah. Duel 21. Title. Troublesome insects. Nanami did and... You, wait, so did you say troublesome incest? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> or what's the word? Insects. In, 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 am insects. I not pronouncing the tip? Insects. Oh, sorry. Because it, it could easily yeah, just could be easily called <laughs> Troublesome Incest. Would have been an That's e- the name of the show, right? Would have been an equally relevant title for this episode, though. <laughs> for, for every episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, every second episode. Ah, oh, fuck. So it starts with Nanami and the Mean Girls walking through the campus, and then flashback. The Mean Girls are asking Nanami for the first time upon meeting her if she wants to be in their little clique. Uh, they learn who her brother is, and all of them want her in the group even more because they want that D. Uh, we, we learn their names for the first time. By D, he means Dios. Yeah, Dios, that, that powerful <laughs> Dios. That powerful Dios. Right all up inside him. Uh, we learn their names for the first time. Eiko, Keiko, and Yuko. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the present day, Nanami decides to throw a party to cheer up Toga. The brown pigtails one, Keiko. She secretly still pines for Toga's D, but she fears Nanami. So she hasn't acted on it yet. Mm. They prep for the party and Keiko buys a new dress. Uh, however, before she gets to enjoy it, Nanami sends her away to do some work for her. Uh, she goes, albeit reluctantly, and then later coming coming home, she watches the party from the outside. Utena and Mickey are talking about how the party went while uh, Auntie's nodding off. Something's obviously been keeping her from sleeping properly. It's uh, it's not Chuchu with his sleeping bag and his fart sucking. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> really weird. <laughs> Doesn't need more context. Uh, Toga's still not showing up to school apparently Utena and Anthe stargaze in Akio's planetarium uh, Akio's been teaching Utena about the stars a lot la- lately laying the groundwork he comes in and he chats them both up saying that they both look beautiful sitting together like that on the couch Utena leaves and Akio asks that Anthe say good and close to Utena Keiko sees Toga walking in the rain and she has a dilemma over what to do she, o- she ends up offering him to share her umbrella but Nanami sees which is what she was uh, afraid of that's the point the rose is plucked. She tells Keiko that uh, she's dismissed as her, her lackey. She's she's relieved of all lackey duties. And Keiko throws herself on the mercy of her sisters. Please, you've got to speak some sense into Nam- Nanami. But they <laughs> freeze her out. They're not related. No, are they? metaphoric sisters. Okay. In the regress evader, she yells about Nanami always being a bitch to her. Uh, and then the usual base morg ring rose. And then she goes to Toga's place. And she runs her hand down his bare chest and pulls his sword out. Yeah, aggressive these parts come. Yeah. Uh, challenge, music, video, staircase, arena, umbrellas on the desk this time. They start the fight, and Utena is confused about who this, woman, who this girl is, <laughs> <laughs> but she still wins. Uh, Keiko returns to her duty as Mean Girl. Nanami accepted her back again for some reason, uh, and Utena remains confused as to what's happening. Anthe explains that it's easy to lie to oneself if it's for someone you love. Yeah. And that's the end of the three we watched. Um... Wow. Yeah, so I kind of give... I sort of led with uh, with with my feelings on it. I really enjoyed these episodes. Curtis, you guys? Curtis. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed them. Hesitation, though. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't... <laughs> care to elaborate on that hesitation. <laughs> um, I, I enjoyed them. I, I, I'm, I guess I, I'm starting to want... Some difference, more, some variations and stuff, and, right. and yeah, some more more difference. But I, I am enjoying it. I'm still yeah. enjoying it, and I think, yeah, fair enough. I I had a really good time as well. Mm. Um, I really my favorite of the three was episode nineteen for right. sure because it that was a change in formula that wasn't really filler. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So like nineteen and twenty were excellent development for Wakaba because yeah. she, I feel like she's been left in the dirt a little bit for the, these yeah. past hundred episodes. Um. But yeah, I loved it. I also really liked um, Onion Prince, just like in a panic, almost going to the Mikage seminar, and then it 
not working out for him. I like that they establish that not anybody, mm. and they're not corrupting people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they, so you like have getting to, corrupted people. You, yeah, they're getting people who already have darkness in their heart. Yeah. Although, having said that, they do manipulate Jury with the pendant thing and the yeah but she already had darkness in her heart like she wasn't because he's a wholly good person apparently yeah and she's not she was kind of fluctuating right yeah she had the orange rose as well they're I mean they're willing to manipulate Wakaba Mm. with the with the hair clip but she's not a wholly good person (laughs) she's self interested because she doesn't care whether Sayonji's happy right she She wants to be she wants Sayonji for herself right there's a difference yeah okay quality yeah, content <laughs> yeah I just yeah I really liked it as soon as as soon as the elevator started going back up I'm like what, what the fuck is happening <laughs> this doesn't go up again yeah it was good stuff um uh what else happened in episode 18 19 um yeah I I nothing else really super exciting happened but I enjoyed Wakaba getting some fucking screen time um and then really, really liked her awesome outfit that she got. She got, like, the best outfit yet, I think. I don't know why. It seemed to have more detail to it. Better than fucking um, Nanami's jumpsuit. Um, yeah. Not a fan of Nanami's jumpsuit. No, nah, I'm not a fan of Nanami. She looks... It looks like... You know what it looks like instead of, like, a like a military uniform? It looks like horse riding pants. And then some dumb yellow <laughs> shirt. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I just being a dick. I, no, I don't. I don't um, like it that much. I... Uh, I... When... When Utena says to Wakaba, uh, you'll make someone a lovely wife one day. And she's like, yeah, I sure will. And I was like, oh, I was hoping that, <laughs> I was hoping that they'd just keep it a little bit more um, ad- ambiguous about what the what uh, Wakaba's situation is. Like then, it's clarified now. That yeah, she that is... she's like definitely thinks of herself as straight and yeah. thinks well, of herself as straight and stuff. Yeah, 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 I, know, I think that clarifies... Kind of everybody is gay. No, I know. It's just that <laughs> yeah. she has been so heavy on the you're my true beloved and stuff she yeah. says she refers to Utena as her beloved in so many episodes that I was like overcompensating I was, yeah maybe <laughs> I was just hoping that it would turn out that she was actually kind of in, into Utena true I think everyone's a little into yeah, yeah I suppose so yeah, yeah. So whenever she walks through the school and the yeah. all, the, all the school girls are like oh Utena's <laughs> wearing buying, a girl's dress so. buying photos of her and stuff yeah um, that, that was the thing about Wakaba I quite, I quite liked how um she's normal um compared to everyone else at the school who is just incredible and amazing and doing crazy shit um but it was kind of it's kind of it was really sad that she uh i think akio says to utana that um Ut- utana is, is special and uh shining and like a shining star and she can't even see it in herself um but utana's utana's noticed that and wakaba um, and then he and then he says, but it's not gonna it's not gonna last it's not gonna last forever. Mm. And uh, I don't know that was just kind of kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> for Wakaba. Um, yeah. yeah. So oh, do you ship Wakaba and Ush- let's do ships? Let's ship ship uh, 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 end of the series sink ships. So, uh, something about a, a pun or a portmanteau on ships. <laughs> you're just leaving space to add things in later once you come up with a better pun I'm trying to think of one on the spot because this is this is impromptu but like like loose lips sink ships kind of works but it's not really loose lips that do it you know what I mean well I'm, I'm totally lost like relationship you know, you know how you like if you're a fan or something you're like I ship this person with this person like relationship it doesn't have to be romantic okay. but I'm asking if you romantically ship like put them on a boat, a relationship, <laughs> yeah. if you will. Yeah. <laughs> Wakaba and Utena. Have you ever heard the verb to ship? No, I haven't. The, the, no, there you go. Yeah. Because okay, so like <laughs> you have a relationship, which is yeah. like a boat, and to ship something is to like to send it somewhere. So you're putting Utena and Wakaba on the relationship. Okay. For instance, are you? I'm asking like, you. As a couple. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Well, I do. You do. I, I, I oh, did until oh. now. Oh, like, just asking in head um, He was just asking you in your head canon, <coughs> who you who you see together, who you would like who, to see together. Who I would. Who do you no, see? I just. I kind of think. It, I think it's um. Um. Oh. Uh, I don't see Wakaba with Utena. I don't know who Utena. I don't know if Utena is straight or gay. Mm. Um. So I have no idea. She seems asexual. <laughs> she's um, not interested at all um, only interested in her prince that's true 
but also she could. But be then her own she prince. thinks she's her own prince, so she's mm. not really interested in in anyone. She's like Todd from BoJack. I saw her with um, Anthe until we learnt that Anthe's kind of devious and seems somewhat dark. Oh. <laughs> Okay, this is breaking it up, but my prediction is that Anthe isn't actually bad and she's being manipulated a little bit by her brother. And we've already seen that her heart kind of was like, oh, Ushin is actually trying for me. So I think that given that Anthe is definitely 100% bad, we can agree. <laughs> can I, uh, eyes for Anthe's evil. Hi. So there was... This, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say I now mm. but there was the scene where um anthe and usuna are hanging out and um at akio's yeah. um and then utuna leaves and he says to anthe stay, um, close. stay close you know and and she was just yes okay. so so i for that she's evil everybody says <laughs> i the thing that i was going to say is i think she's going to have a redemption arc in the third arc like i reckon the end of this this arc is going to be anthe knew all along the power of deos and it was her and her brother and then the third arc is going to be like her and Ushina reuniting um they'll leave it ambiguous as to whether they have a romantic relationship but i mm. think that she's going to be like oh you really did care about me <laughs> <laughs> but we don't get to see it because they're 14 in the obvious <laughs> that's right yeah <laughs> <laughs> I like that you actually forget. It seems, yeah. They are ridiculously drawn for 14 year olds. Yeah, yeah. At one point in the uh, in the Keiko episode, she's like standing in the mirror in her underwear, wondering what dress to put on for the part. And I paused it because I was like, "Those are some ridiculous legs." Yeah. <laughs> and I and I measured it on the screen, <laughs> and like it's a, it's a straight on angle, so there's no like perspective issue of her like head being further away from the camera or anything. She's like straight on, and I measured it. And her legs are more than twice the length of her entire torso and head combined. So they're that's twice crazy. as long as they should be. <laughs> that's Barbie proportions. <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I think that's a part of the shoujo style is to have really long characters because their noses yeah. are pretty yeah, long as well. Pointy. And, Point, everything's um, sharp and pointy, but then really soft, huge eyes. People like Sionji and stuff are, are very tall men. Yeah. yeah. He's like seven foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. is incredibly tall and he's so tall. How old is he supposed to be? Like 17. 17, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like seven foot's pretty... It's acceptable then, right? It's like understandable. I mean, I remember when I was 17 and I was like just cresting like six, seven, so... <laughs> and everybody knows now I'm eight. Yeah. <laughs> foot. <laughs> tall. Tall, yeah. Uh, I've got a question. What are the student council meant to be doing? I don't know at this point. In <laughs> real life or in the yeah, show? Like in, in, well, in real life. What, what do they do in student, real life? Yeah. What would a student council do? In real life, they're in charge of organizing... Um, so they have things like... Okay, so the student council has a bit more responsibility than uh, schools would in New Zealand. You're not from New Zealand, Robert. You're from some Europe uh, yeah, country. Yeah, you have heard of it. Um, but in New Zealand, the student council was just like, oh, I do speaches during Anzac Day. Nah, and oh, I'm the head of a club. And... Uh, <laughs> I never really understood what they did. Vote for me to do what? <laughs> um, but in the, in the student councils in Japan, um, they are involved with determining how much budget other clubs get. Whoa. They, yeah. Um, and they're also in charge of doing like the macro organization of cultural festivals, which I know that I've talked with Rob outside of the podcast about cultural festivals in Japan. Um so they have a, a lot more power. They they also pick club rooms. They have say like you, oh your club has this many members, then you should get this room. This club needs this space because they need drills for reasons. Yeah. Um, so they're more involved in like extracurricular activities and also teachers and stuff like that. Because when we see them in the show, they it was always like a structured thing when uh, when Togo was running it, and the, the, every single time we see them having a meeting, it starts with them chanting about yeah. cracking the world, the egg shell, and all that. Um, and they're taking minutes, and it seems like they've got a purpose to be in there. And then I really like that in the last few episodes, like it started that way when she took over, mm. and then we haven't seen them do that same sort of Shrugs meetings chant. And she's kind of it's like Nanami's forgetting how to run a meeting. And the last few times that we've seen them, they were just chatting about love or chatting yeah. about a party and yeah. they're just sitting around doing apart. Yeah, yeah it's falling apart and it's, it's fun to see them doing that especially because they're also worried that 
their 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 um element of the fighting and the the tournament is yeah. done yeah. they've all fought and they've all lost and they're all like well and, then, and they're not getting any letters from end of the world anymore and they're all like fuck what are we doing what do we do how do you reckon toga will enter the show again yeah i was wondering about that um i, I, reckon... I couldn't have predicted this was uh Sionji. i didn't think that he would be living with uh wakaba no neither did i um i think he's i don't it's hard to tell i, I think he's going to come back in in either the next one or the one after mm. Um, and I, part of me feels like he's just gonna come in as if he's not not been gone. He's just gonna be like, "I'm back now. I was I was never even left." And he's, he's. Do you know what would be cool? Sorry for interrupting. Okay. Uh, what I think would be cool, but I don't think will actually happen, is if he goes because he's not expelled, right? He's just miserable. Yeah. He's... And when people are miserable, they go to the Makage seminar yeah. and they go down the elevator. He's gonna do that, and then he's going to go up to Nanami. And she's going to think that he's finally returning her love. Yeah. And then he's going to pull her sword out as well. That would be fucked up. I did I did wonder how he is taking so long off of school without, like, getting <laughs> expelled or expelled. It's an anime. <laughs> it's just... Nothing fucking matters. Do you think... Do you think... Do you think anyone's house could take Anthe's sword? Because... No. Um, Utena you... takes Anthe's sword oh, out of, like... Toga took her sword. But, like, when you go, like, the Black Ro- yeah. Rose way it, you tend to take the sword out of like um like a like someone who a you have a lot of an affection angel. for or yeah. like yeah so toga takes anthe's sword and then ocean is like well fuck yeah and then she has to take me uh, the other one's sword what is it <laughs> mamia said oh said miki mama which is not <laughs> miki mama they've got mikage and uh <laughs> m- m- what and if stuff. what if somebody has two swords and they don't know it until one of them is drawn and then the other one's like oh what to do and then they <gasps> and another sword comes out all, all, all strange, <laughs> strange things to speculate on this, the nature of doing that the nature of doing this when we could just binge it is kind of weird I've just thought I'm like we could just whatever yeah it's, um, it's fun though because we can speculate between episodes yeah um Episode twenty. I just I don't. Jesus have much, Christ, we're only episode twenty. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have much to say about that other than the fact that it was just really beautiful and really dramatic and well written. Um, I just thought it was fantastic. Uh, probably my favorite episode. Yeah, it was. It was really good. And I already said Wakaba's cool. What's the deal with the relationship with the chairman? He's he's acting chairman, right? So he's mm. a, effectively principal. Have we yeah. said that that's effectively yeah, I, the same thing. I think thing? so. I think so. And what? And U- Utena, we see him. We see her around at his place like all the time now. Is um, that's what I was going to say? I feel like these past couple. So the first arc is this is who Utena is, and this is the kind of person she is. And this whole arc has really taken the focus away from her, and she seems to be developing off camera. Yeah, and her relationship with Akio because we don't she gets introduced to him, but we don't see that kind of starting to take off. They've got a, a relationship where they're like their confidence to each other. He'll be talking to her, and she's and she he's apparently been telling teaching her all about the stars and stuff with his million dollar projector that he's just got in his room with him and and she's just able to use it whenever he wants whenever she wants the stuff should we see her doing like yoga in his room at one point while she's talking to him it's just an odd relationship to have with the principal of your school i don't know man he always has information on like people he always seems to know what's up with everyone because he's orchestrating the fights is it he, he is i don't know if he's into the world yeah but he's probably into the world <laughs> yeah He's he's got the giant telescope and it's pointed out upwards into into space. But maybe he's just using his observatory to look at everyone on the ground. Well, yeah, he's watching the fights. <laughs> yeah. I was I was corrected by a listener when I called it a telescope. Apparently, it's oh. just a projector. It's kind of like a planetarium oh, a... rather than an observatory. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, um, that's a dope. That's a dope setup. It really it's a dope is. House. Yeah. 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 And apparently you can choose any night sky because he comes in at one point and says, ah, oh, the winter constellations, good choice. Yes, yes. So they can set up all sorts of things. Um, can we go back to talking about the the roses and the swords and what it means to actually draw something out? No. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because in Keiko's episode, she is conflicted about what to do with Togus when she sees him in the rain. She's like, I don't want to piss off in the Nami, but I also really like this guy and it's a, ch- it's a good chance to hit on him. So eventually that overcomes and she runs over, she gives him his um, uh, her umbrella. When Nanami sees them together, the rose is plucked. But Nanami is not involved in the sword in any way. She doesn't donate the sword and she's not the challenger. The, 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 rose, it, the rose up until now has been getting the actual challenger, the person who's going to be fighting, 
getting them into an emotional state where they're corrupted or manipulated enough that they are feeling intense emotions and that's when the pl- rose is plucked the, the, the if it was being consistent by those rules mm. the place where the rose would have been plucked would have been when Nanami kicked her out of the clip yeah so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. And then why was it Toga's uh, sword? Yeah, because, because he doesn't know. He's only known her like yeah, he once. Know her. But the, also, is this uh, these past two have shown that you can kind of forcefully take somebody's yeah. sword? Because when it was Jury and when it was Mickey and even Nanami was the little baby boy, mm. he um they t- they kind of caused them to grow out. Yeah. But then I think it's when it's unrequited, but wanted, you can just put stick your hand in their chest and pull it out anyway i think that they plucked it then because that's when keiko's feelings are probably at their strongest like oh now i really don't care because i've got i've gotten close to toga do you know what i mean like right. this is the point where damn damn it all i've got my in and i'm gonna go for it but i don't know who so that's all the council members who've had swords are drawn from them now right yes and who else is a is is going to be a sword donor then? Well, after the next couple episodes, we're going to be into the third arc. Right. So we're, maybe... we're almost at the end. So I think that Toga will probably show up, like you say, in the next couple episodes. Hmm. Um, so the only people left are Mamiya and Soji that we know of. Yeah. So we might get a random third person yeah, or random. Toga fighting again. Jerry might come back. True. Yeah, maybe. Um, so 21? Yeah, 21. Um... I don't have much else to say that hasn't already been said. We kind of jumped around a bit. Yeah. Um, but I, what, I, what I did like is that in the ver- in the very last fight when Keiko does challenge Utena, Utena keeps going... Well, she starts the fight with Yo! Yeah. Yo! She's like trying to remember her name. She doesn't even know who the yeah. challenger is at this stage. And then and then uh, during the fight, she's sort of running around all over the place. And she goes, Can you beat Toga's sword? The master sword? And, and Utena goes... Toga sword. Why do you have Toga sword? How do you have Toga? Yeah, exactly. That's pretty good. She was like speaking for me at that point because I was like, "What? What connection does she have with Toga?" So that was your that was your best bit. Uh, no, my favorite bit. Um, oh, it wasn't actually a, a, a funny bit this time. It was actually just an animation thing. When Sai Sayonji's in uh, in Wakaba's house and she's talking to him, she's really happy. Uh, he says, "Oh." um... Oh, never mind. And she goes, "No, no, you can ask me anything." And he goes, "Oh, uh, I was just, I was just wondering if you'd you'd heard from Anthe lately." And he tries to like pass it off as nothing, mm. and it's just the subtlest face drop. She's like goes from yeah. a smile to just a just a straight face, and it's so subtle. I had to watch it a few times, and I was like, "That is amazing that I can read on this this two dimensional animated face." From exactly, 1997. Yeah, exactly what's happening. But it was great. It was a good bit. Do you have a best bit? Uh, choo choo in the dress. Choo choo in the choo, dress. Choo choo sucking fat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, there was some animation I liked, but um, the the bit that stood out the most was um, Wakaba um charging at Sionji, pulling out. Oh yeah, that was that was good. It all changed to uh, red and black. That was that very styling and. And change he was, of pace he was in pain like yeah. he was, he screamed more than anybody else has so far I yeah, think yeah he was, and, and it's sort of like slowly not as slow as with um, Toga but we see those last two that we've seen getting yeah, drawn out it yeah. kind of slowly draws yeah. itself out handle first kind yeah. of reflects um, Wakaba's pain mm, true yeah. slow and drawn out Your my favorite bit? My, yeah my best bit uh, I've already mentioned how much I like Wakaba's uniform. Don't know what that is. Um, you like a girl in uniform? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Step on me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you made me forget. Because like, oh no, I liked when I liked that uh, Ushina was a badass and didn't draw her sword when she fought Wakaba. Yeah, that's that was cool. that was pretty badass. badass. She didn't even do it with the power of Dios, which also means that Wakaba's really shit at fighting. <laughs> but very cool fight. Yeah. Oh, they when they when they do bring bring a sword out, they seem to take on the fighting power of the person whose sword it is. Yes, because uh, Sionji's fought with Sionji's power and yeah. stuff like that. Um, so I don't know. Is there a thing in anime um, with swords having power? Yeah. So you don't really need to be like a great fighter. You could just have the right sword. I think that's a part of um, Japanese folklore that yeah. swords made by certain people or like they're superstitious about swords yeah I was just reading in one piece um there's like a bunch of like 12 swords made by this one master yeah. and one of them is bad luck because everybody who owned it died 
after owning it for a certain amount of time. Yeah. So I think I think it's a part of Japanese culture to have a weight on a sword. Right. That a sword is more than just a piece of material, because they fucking like when katanas, right? Yeah. Uh, they used to to make a, a traditional Japanese katana I mean to refining the steel and tempering it twelve times, which takes two weeks to do. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm just gonna spout some stuff that I learned from Doctor Stone, but then some people <laughs> be like, "He just learned it from Doctor Stone." Um. Uh. So now that I've acknowledged it, um, it turns <laughs> out they they studied it. Like they did a test on the the quality of the metal. Yeah. Um. A, uh, a sharp diminish in returns after the second time you uh, oh. temper it. So doing it twelve times probably probably overkill. <laughs> um, but yeah. But maybe it's some sort of placebo effect with the wielder. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. like this guy's worked for two weeks on the sword. This means a lot. It's yeah. like the same with the violins. What are they really? Famous, really, really, really expensive ones. Stravada. Yeah, like those, those ones. Stradivari. Stradivarians. No, no, like, no, no better than like a couple of thousand dollar ones. It's no point playing over a million for one of them. But there is like a noticeable difference if you're playing one, just because you know that it's good. <laughs> and, because you paid a million yeah, dollars. But when they blind, play a bit, yeah, yeah. When they when they've done blind tests on with people, um, where they can't tell which one they're playing. That sound, like other people can't tell the difference in the m- music quality and stuff like that um, so maybe there's the same with the sword like a sword fighter who knows that they're fighting with a a sword t- with a legacy yeah exactly mm. maybe they're fighting with more honour I don't know all possible things but do you know what I mean it, we would review the segment where we talk about anything else that we did in the week any other anime that we watched any other video games we played or all that kind of stuff uh i finally finished school days i brought it up weeks ago at this point so now i'm gonna have to do a recap and i apologize if anybody is hearing me have to do a recap so the reason i started watching school days was because it has a, a meme level of notoriety because it has like a bad ending to it um, and I'm just going to spoil it. So if you really just don't want to have it spoiled, it's not that good, I'll say, right off the bat. It's got like a six rating on my anime list, and that's kind of what I would rate it. But if you don't want spoilers, skip ahead like, I don't know, 10 minutes. Um, so the whole thing is that it's based on a, a visual novel, um, Dating Sim. And the visual novel was infamous because if you got a bad ending, you got a really bad ending. Like the character usually was murdered by one of the girls that you were dating. Um, and the reason that the anime is notorious is because they chose to adapt one of the worst endings you could get. <laughs> um, and then, which escalated it to even more mean status, is because the day that the last episode where all the bad stuff happens was supposed to air, they took it off the air because a girl killed her dad in a similar fashion to how the main character oh, is shit. killed in the anime. Um, and instead of playing uh, the episode of the anime, they just put a picture of uh, footage of a nice boat sailing around Norway. <laughs> um, so usually, if there's like a really sharp, which is equivalent, uh, <laughs> it's gonna get the same sort of viewership. <laughs> the, the last yeah. audience, the last shot of the anime is a boat sailing into the sunset. So it's kind of like, were you fucking with me right now? <laughs> wow. Do you are you memeing me hard right now? <laughs> Using yeah. Tokyo uh, TV station. <laughs> um, so if there's like a thing. The joke is that if you see something taking a dark turn, you just say "nice boat," like because uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, cool. So I, I knew that it was going to go bad, and that's kind of why I was watching it. Oh, so in, a little, little bit more backstory for the airing of it. I mean, they had to do like private airings in a movie theater because people were so upset that they didn't get to see the last episode of the TV show. <laughs> Ridiculous. So, so they didn't just postpone the last episode. No, they just were like, no, not airing it. No way. <laughs> wow. Um, so the, the thing that happens is like uh, you got the main character Makoto and it's his second year of high school whoa and he finds sees a girl on a train thinks she's really hot um, a girl in his class agrees to help him get her her name is Sekai so just the three names I'm going to bring up are Sekai who's the girl who's helping him get the next girl uh, Kotonaha I so, get what do you mean like go out with her like get yeah. her to go out with him and start dating Ooh. Yeah. so the first like five episodes are, or the first couple episodes are like oh gee I like her I can't get up the courage to ask her out and uh, Sekai is like do it do it do it do it and then when he finally does it and she says yes and they're going to go on a date Sekai kisses him and then like goes this is this is fine and then jumps on the train 
as in like this is enough for me now like I've made you happy I'm, I'm totally fine episode 6 by the time we get to episode 6 he is cheating on his girlfriend with Sekai so <laughs> cheating on Kotonaha with Sekai, Sekai and it just it just quickly starts to just like you come over the top of the roller coaster and it just starts to descend very quickly he starts off as kind of caring that's the other thing so it's, he's based on a visual novel protagonist which means he has no personality because mm-hmm. you're playing the visual novel yeah. to like uh, put, yourself in. put yourself in the main character's shoes and date all these hot girls for yourself yeah. so he's blander than butter on toast which is actually probably not that bland but <laughs> um, there's nothing to him so there's no reason that all these girls should like him so he's cheating on his girlfriend he starts cheating on the person who he's cheating on with he's just he's, he's a scummy dude he's mm-hmm. on it like he's he's bad right um and the episode like the last episode he's gotten Sekai pregnant but he's decided he's just angry at her for getting pregnant like it's her fault <laughs> he, there's one point he's like why the fuck did you have to get pregnant like this isn't my fault and it's like um <laughs> takes two to tango so he's gotten Sekai pregnant and he's just gone back to Kotonoha oh that's the other heartbreaking thing I'm all over the place but um so Ko- the reason that he's cheating on Kotonoha is because he's um, a well, no, okay, so, so like he is a douche, but so she's got the biggest boobs in school. Whoa! Um, but she's really self conscious about them because they're so big, and he like keeps trying to grab them, and she's a little bit frigid because she's uncomfortable about her body, which is all fine stuff. And Sekai is really easy. She's like, you can just practice on me, wink, wink. Um, hmm. And then like by episode seven, Kodana is like, please, can you just touch me now? Like, like there's a slow arc of her being like I'm scared of you to touch me to like no 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 please can you touch me now because she knows that he's cheating but she yeah. hasn't confronted him about it it's it's pretty upsetting stuff um anyways last episode he's gotten Sekai pregnant but he's back with Kotonoha Sekai comes over and stabs him like a hundred times and then Kotonoha goes over to see him sees that he's dead and then Sekai gets a text from uh the main character Makoto's phone saying meet me on the rooftop when she gets up to the rooftop, there's just a bag sitting on a chair, and then Kodana has like, uh, why'd you do it? And she's like, oh, I had to. And then she's like, well, I'm his girlfriend, so you should know that we can be together. She's like, no, you can't. And he's like, no, no, he's here. He's on the chair. And then she goes over to the chair, opens the chair, and it's like, oh, what's in the box thing? His head's in the bag. Um, and then she's like, why did you lie about being pregnant? And she's like, I didn't lie about being pregnant. And she's like, well, we'll see. And then she like cuts her open. He goes, see, there's nobody inside. Because she can't open her stomach. Has a very dark ending. No. My so, so, wait, let me get my head around that. I went really quickly. I'm going to have to slow that down. So, the girlfriend... Kotonoha. Cuts off the head of her, bo- her dead boyfriend? Yeah, so Sekai, who Makoto got pregnant... Yeah. The, the uh, mistress. Kills him. The mistress stabs him a hunt. He's got, like, three mistresses. Yeah, four the, mistresses. The named mistress. mistress. The main mistress who's pregnant... She stabs loses him Loses it dead. and stabs him dead. Who cuts off his head? Uh, Kodonoha, his girlfriend, comes home to find him dead. Gets, They're 15. She's psychotic and doesn't realise he's dead and oh, we should be, still be together. Yeah, though, cuts so his, head off, his head off, meets Sekai on the roof um, where and she, is like, where why she does he... needs to cut her open to prove that she's, she's not, not pregnant. pregnant. Yeah, and then uh, the last shot is uh, Makoto's... Uh, Kodonoha's really rich, so she's on her yacht with the head of the main character and is like, we can finally be alone together. And then she kisses the head and then it just like does it like a long shot of just a boat sailing into the sunset and then it's just like banana dance banana, 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 banana. um so a real feel good piece <laughs> what's so what was the relation to that and the real life murder uh a girl killed her dad and cut his head off um, and then yeah. put it in a bag and that's and when when yeah, no, it, was, it was just they were like this <laughs> it's, it's too much more. like it's just too much it's too close to home maybe we won't do it japan, japan has probably the west as well but I, I don't know of any examples like there's an episode of neon genesis evangelion that they were like three quarters of the way through production that they had to completely scrap because it was too close to the sars attacks that happened in japan okay. there was like a train episode oh. and they were like we can't do this too close to home so yeah. scrap it anyways so i the reason i watched school days was because I wanted to be a part of like the zeitgeist same thing as what Robert's doing um I will say that it is incredibly slow there's a lot of faff of people being like oh do you want to go to the dance oh let's go to the swimming pool Ah." and I don't (laughs) I've never really been a big fan of harem anime to begin with so this is probably not right a good one for me um but at the same time knowing the ending and watching take the sharp turn and then just go down the hill at like 100 kilometers per hour 
it, it, I was like filled with dread because I was like, oh man, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my God. And then he would do like, make another horrible decision. And I would right. just like audibly, like my, my girlfriend was like, can you just like shut the fuck up? Because every time something happened, I'd be like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you, why are you doing this? It, it, like, it becomes constant. And then like one of his mistresses at one point who's known him since they were little, you know, finds out that he got one girl pregnant and she, he's still fucking her and goes around to his house to confront him. He's like, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. Like, let's have sex. And she's like, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. And he's like, no, nah, uh, real quick, real quick. And she's like, you used to be a much kinder and caring person. And then she bounces. So, I mean, shouldn't have cheated. <laughs> shouldn't have helped him cheat, but still. Um, but you, you, so you were invested in the character then? Or no, you, it's, yeah, it was, it was annoying because it was more like watching a train wreck, and you can't kind of take your eyes away from what's happening. It's like, okay. oh, how is he going to make this worse, or like, can he make this? Oh, he did. Oh, oh it got worse again. But it, so, but it seemed believable from his character. Like, mm, I, okay, so what I think it actually is is a commentary on visual novel games, visual novel harem games, right? Because okay. it's the kind of thing where I can see somebody playing a visual novel harem game right. and they're trying to get all the girls. Right. So that seems like that, that. I can't think of any other reason that you would just, like, some girl confesses to you while you're dating and fucking another girl, two other girls. Yeah. And he says, like, yes, yeah, it is. And then just, yeah. like, takes her into a back room and bangs her. Right. And then there's another girl, like, it just... It's, Every time somebody confesses to him, it's whatever's easiest. He's like, oh, porn scene? Me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's got like an end to yeah. it, so yeah, there's yeah. no like he's not making decisions based on like, geez, I've got someone pregnant. Yeah, that's a big thing. Like he's just like, oh, what you're pregnant? Fuck, this game sucks. <laughs> but he, the decisions that he makes in the show are literally just whatever's easiest. L- literally, like whoever throws himself the hardest at him, he's like, right. sweet ass. Right, right. And then he doesn't feel that much remorse for hurting other people do you know what I mean as if it yeah. were a video game so and it sounds quite good like what? yeah yeah, yeah. It, so from that but you have to, to, to get that appreciation you have to have played some Aroge or like have an understanding of how those play right. if you didn't it would just be annoying it would right. just be like, what the fuck is happening right now right yeah have you played the game you played no the I haven't game? played the game yeah. no 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 I, I've played very few visual novel games I love that there's I love that there's that level of um what are they called? Ero- Eroge. Eroge. Like erotic games. I love that there's that level where you're not only um, like going around fucking these characters, um, but they are getting pregnant. <laughs> and, and <laughs> Realistic. Like, like, yeah, yeah. Because, because that's, that's also why I think it's a commentary on visual novels, because it was a visual novel initially, right? Mm, I think yeah. that the dude made it to be kind of like a comment on the medium that he's yeah, a part of. yeah. Like, it's wish fulfillment to the highest degree with no consequences. What if there were consequences? What yeah, if things went yeah. really bad for you? Yeah. Do you guys remember several episodes ago I was talking about Red Dwarf, which uh, yeah. is, an, is an anime, but uh, it's too too um, appropriate to pass up the chance. There's an episode of that where, where they get like a, it's like a second life kind of a game. It's a virtual reality game. They put their headsets on and they, they're suddenly in this other virtual reality world where anything you want can happen. You just have to think it and it's there. But they're playing it with one guy who's so self uh self-harming effectively in in his thoughts that he can't be happy like so so he starts off like he's the, he's suddenly greeted by the captain of whatever he's, he's he's like a naval captain now and he's super happy and he meets a gorgeous girl and all oh, this gets a bentley or whatever and then like a few <laughs> few scenes later he like turns up in this shitty little banger of a car and, and his ugly wife pulls out and there's seven kids and they're like what the hell's happened to you he's like oh it just I, I started in introducing realistic moments to make it yeah. feel better yeah, and then my wife better. left me <laughs> he's like how did your wife leave you in this fantasy yeah. land of a well, yeah good. feels like that yeah <laughs> yeah um so I, I I literally only finished watch sorry I don't know how what to add to that <laughs> um I I literally finished watching it before you guys came over because I was like I need to I need to have this talk about I've waited weeks um so it's a bit fresh I don't really know I, I don't hate it. It's got a bit of a bad rep. People really don't like the presentation of it. But when you kind of think about the themes that it's dealing with, considering the context, like the medium that it's commenting on, yeah. it's not so bad. And I didn't hate it. Like it, it got an emotional reaction out of me. And I think that's what it was. I watched the last three episodes with my girlfriend as well, who hadn't seen the previous nine. <laughs> she could kind of follow. She was like, wait, who's this? And I was like, oh, mistress, this, this person, <laughs> uh, chick number three. Um, and she hated it. She was like, this guy's an asshole, hmm. and he doesn't have a redemption arc. Right. 
but like that's the point i don't think you're supposed to like his character yeah mm. and there are other shows where a character would do that and there would be no consequences and it would be fine whereas this really kind of makes it so that you can't look away from how bad he is yeah, yeah. because they have like really long shots of um the girl who's pregnant just crying and not not like bawling her eyes up but she's just like in her pajamas in bed depressed because she thought that she meant something to him and she's like looking through the texts that wow. they've been sending each other and where he's like i like you more than my girlfriend and i need to see you right now and you mean everything to me so it has a realistic aspect to it where you can see like if a girl was treated like this this might be maybe not killing but yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. people are understandably upset by this guy's actions and he's just a shithead um yeah. it's definitely not perfect but I, I kind of don't know how to feel about it at the moment. So, uh, do you know enough about the game to, to comment on how else it could end? I don't know enough about the game to know how else it do could you know end. There are, do you know if there are... Other bad endings? Other good endings? Like, I think are... there are good endings. I can see... There are ways he could have played it that would have been... You can choose... Fine. You can perhaps choose to play him as a nice guy. As, and, a, mo- as, a, as a monogamous. Yeah. Who doesn't just be like, oh yeah, porn scene, let's go! Is it an Aroge? Like, yeah, it is an Aroge, yeah, yeah, yeah. So probably not. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Well, no, you, you can... Um, with the rogue, you don't have to do harem situations. You can go like, I'm gonna go for this girl. We're gonna get married and whatever. It's a high school game, so you wouldn't get married. And like the most you would see is boobies. But I don't know. Um, it doesn't. Uh, it, this is not a um, not a. It's got a little bit of fan service. Like they go to the pool at one point. It's like, oh, swimsuits. Um, but it's not. It's it is a lot more focused on how miserable he makes people <laughs> than uh, boobs and stuff. And do you reckon fans would have liked it more if they'd just chosen a different ending? No, I have no idea what fans of the game think of it. I just know what the anime fans think of it, which is mixed at best. <laughs> a lot of people really don't like it. Um, some people really really like it. I, it's no masterpiece. Do you think it just missed what it was going for? Like I feel like that's a hard thing to show. Yeah. You know. Definitely. I think it would have worked better as a visual novel, for sure. Especially yeah. if you're the one making these decisions, and then by the end of it, you're like, well, fuck. <laughs> yeah. So that was bad. Yeah. Or maybe it would go over your head if you're the wrong kind of person. You're like, uh, returning this game, uh, <laughs> tried to fuck everybody and got my head cut off. Uh, you get a 10 stars. Yeah. Can you think of other media where, they, where the main character is unlikable and not redeemed? Light Yagami. And Death Note. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Walter White. Yeah, Walter and, White's the only one that came to mind for me. So I was trying to think of others, but other. And I mean, when you say other medium, you just mean anything, anything else, like really. video games or anything else. Yeah, um, like, do, you, do you, you don't see it too often that the that the the protagonist is also the bad guy, effectively. I told last weekend when we hung out. Um, I told you about the video game Lisa. Yeah. The main character in that is becoming increasingly unlikable right. as opposed to more likable. Right. Like, you find out... Because you don't know that much about him when you start playing, but yeah. the more you find out about him, it's like, man... Probably, like, no? Probably, like, <laughs> like a hard no from me? <laughs> right. Um, I, I mean, he could have a redemption arc. I'm not quite finished yet, but... um, Yeah, no, I... It's a different... It's a di- So, usually, you're rooting for the main character, but I wasn't rooting for him to get his head cut off. <laughs> but I was definitely, like... Yeah, it was more of a morbid fascination with how badly can he fuck this up. You were hoping that he would get some comeuppance though by the end. Uh, yeah, well, it's kind of hard because I knew how it ended right. going into it. Like yeah. I knew I didn't know the ins and outs of. It. I knew that he died and got his head cut off, but that was it. How, how different do you reckon it would have played out if it had just gone on the same way and then it got to the end and it's like the end no, and, and nothing had happened. It, he was still just living the life he had with this. Would have would have I would I would have hated it. I would have been like this this did, <laughs> this, did this ha- this was vacuous. Yeah. Totally vapid. Yeah. Um yeah, especially if especially if it had ended with him getting back to with the girl who he was the big cuz this is oh, okay so there's this whole scene in the second to last or the last episode where um it's, it's really heartbreaking. I don't know why it upsets me so much, but there's a scene where Sekai, and she's 15, they're all 15, Sekai's gone around to his house to cook him dinner, and he's not there. He's out roaming the street. He's texting one of his girls, and they're not texting him back, and he's all shitty, oh, they're not texting me back. And at this point, Kodonoha has, is just in complete denial that they aren't dating. She's got, like, glazed over eyes, and she's calling him even though he's blocked her, and, like, she's talking into a phone that's just saying, um the call cannot be completed as dialed and she's like yeah. oh we'll just meet up here now and he just happens to end up in the same park that she's waiting for him in 
I'm trying to slow down. I've realized that <laughs> I probably, if you were listening to this on double speed, it would have quadrupled <laughs> while I was going through the plot. So he, he hasn't spoken to Kodanaha in a while and they just happened to bump into each other. And she is like oblivious almost to what's happened. You know, she doesn't seem to understand what's going on, that he's gotten sick, I pregnant and all this kind of stuff. And she's like, I love you. And he just kind of, and it, it almost looks like he feels sorry. Right. He starts apologizing. Oh, I'm sorry. I've done this to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then she's like, let's go out for dinner. Cause she's rich. Meanwhile, the girl who's got pregnant is at home and has made, like made him a nice dinner, like made a cake and everything. And she's like, where the fuck are you? And he's like, Oh, I'm just out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, and she's like, are yeah. you with someone? Are you cheating on me again? He's like, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not even. And then she's like, I've got, you know, she's like, well, you should treat me better because I've got your baby inside of me. He's like, Kodonoha wouldn't say that. It's like, oh, maybe because she's not fucking pregnant. Oh. And maybe because she's crazy. Anyways, um, he's like screwing over the girl who's got pregnant. Kodonoha comes around to his place and she's like, I'm very forgiving. I forgive both of you, but Sekai, you need to leave. And then Sekai freaks out. And then as she's leaving, Makoto texts her and says, uh, Koronoha says she has the number of a very nice doctor at the hospital that I think you should speak with. Huh. Yeah. Like, get an abortion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. R- ruthless, which is why she stabs him. Um, so he... It's just like, Sekai, even Sekai up until when she stabs him, is like every, all the girls try so hard to be good partners. Yeah. Like, Koronoha, even though she's frigid, she's like, you know, come around and meet my family, and like, let's go on dates and stuff. And Sekai is like, although she was the mistress who led him on, she got pregnant, and she's like, I'm gonna like, try and make this work. And he's just like, everybody, no, I just wanna get my dick wet, man. I'm 15. <laughs> um, yeah, like, they've humanized the female characters. Um, yeah at the same time i mean they do do a lot of bad things all of them it's quite hard to deal with like right there are characters that i haven't yeah it, it's just a weird show let's, i'm done we're starting to repeat ourselves let's okay. move on let's move on robert that's all i watched this week robert what did you what did you do nothing um oh well, that was good I've, yep <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, i've not had time to watch anything this week unfortunately so um i was thinking about watching some naruto but i've got an assignment due in like less than 12 hours that I should be working on oh, so I was like ah maybe I'll work Save on that instead break. so before next week maybe I'll have watched some more of Naruto or something now I don't feel so bad for just like explaining an entire series <laughs> and kind of trying to digest how I feel so about good. it on, on live on the air so good uh, so te- text beautiful. now text now to vote uh, <laughs> council tribe and what do they do in Survivor do they call them the council sessions or the yeah. tribe uh, who the is tribe the, has spoken. The tribe has spoken. Um, so text now to let us know before the end uh, who is who the tribe has spoken about and who is going to be kicked off the show. Keep that in mind. Uh, but while you, <laughs> while you're doing that, let's move into uh, fake views. Fake views is <laughs> is the segment where. <laughs> Um, I read the synopsis for some anime, and some of them are real and some of them are fake. And because I know more, I get to laugh at Robert and Curtis. <laughs> yep. Um, oh, that's the game. Yep. Yeah. That's what I said last time as well. That's, that's the new intro. Um, although sometimes I do a really bad job, but this time maybe? Sometimes, sometimes we collude. Sometimes, yeah, no, no, no He doesn't no, like that. No collusion. He, it's, it's supposed to be competitive. <laughs> Well, if I tell you the answer, then we both win. <laughs> you win nothing. <laughs> the points don't matter. Um, so yeah, play along at home. I think I've got a better system now. Uh, first anime. Set in the future, crystalline organisms known as gems inhabit a world that has been destroyed. While most gems fight the invading aliens, the main character is told to compile an encyclopedia because of their delicate condition. I've condensed it. I realize I pretty much read the synopsis and like named pronoun. <laughs> no pronouns in this one. Okay. I'm going to say fake. I'll say real. You guys just, you guys just don't ever, like, if you don't collude, you're just like, oh, if you went real, I'll go fake. Uh, <laughs> I've got reasons for doing it, but yeah, I can't no. say them okay, because okay. it might be leaving uh, here. We'll go with that it's real. Damn it. It is Hosuke no Kuni. Uh, why did you think it was fake? I thought it was fake because I was thinking that it sounded like... It was Steven like, Universe? No, no, I haven't seen that. Uh-huh. It sounded like um, some sort of a 
an a, a, an app game on for like like Candy Crush or something like like where you like use gems to destroy it. Uh, it the, the alien invaders made me think of space invaders of course and then the gemstones and I was like oh that's going to be like Candy Crush sure <laughs> yeah but the gems are people right uh, did you just why why did you think it was real Curtis didn't feel like there was enough information for it to not be real <laughs> if that makes sense <laughs> like you ended up quite short I've, th- these are all a lot shorter yeah. than they have been in the past I'd used way um, too many pronouns in the past I've realised okay. I'm listening back and I was like fucking if you knew like they had the vague notion of what something was you would just be like <laughs> bang <laughs> right um, I tried to make it it's kind of like the Japanese version of Steven Universe from what I hear yeah you know Steven Universe anyways yeah, yeah. we'll move on uh, second anime uh Oh, and I'm not going to read the ratings on Mal. Nobody cares what numbers are. <laughs> um, anyway, second anime. Uh, after returning home from a trip abroad, the MC returns to find her, her parents and sister are missing. She must search the house for clues to uncover the truth of what happened. Mm. I can. You can ask me questions for more information about them as well. I should have said in the first one as well. Okay, so she's confined to her home. Yeah, so this is a really short, this is like a six episode run, and she's in her house, and it's kind of told through, like, she'll find clues, and then they'll do flashbacks to show what actually happened, you know, or she's trying to figure out what happened. Okay. Uh, Real. She was an MC. Main character. Oh, main character. (laughs) (laughs) She was a DJ. I was confused. Um, Can you give me... What else do you uh, you need? What does she do? She's just been on an OE abroad. Okay. She was a student. Okay. She's graduated and she's gone to oh. overseas. She gets... She's graduated. She's just graduated. Fake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Damn. <laughs> they don't have adults <laughs> in the adult world. So, Seden? Yeah. Yeah, it's fake. <laughs> high five Curtis that's a good stipulation uh, she's not in high school no not happening uh, this is the plot for the video game Gone Home uh, yeah oh is, that, is, is this the one with the non-Euclidean geometry and you open the doors and no that's that's layers of fear uh, yeah, it's a pretty good game I liked it um, uh, Curtis is winning this one shit uh Third and final anime, so Curtis has won this one, but like try and bring it up top unless yeah. you can get it's a negative point for <laughs> <getting it wrong. laughs> yeah, it's wrong with the negative point. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> the main character is a science enthusiast and indulges himself in his hobbies of inventing future gadgets with his fellow friends. Um, bad writing. The three pastime tinkering with their most promising contraption yet, a machine that they call the phone microwave which can send emails into the past. Phone <laughs> <From> microwave. <laughs> that sends emails. Into the past. Of course. Altering the flow of history. <laughs> Do you have any questions? <laughs> what possible questions could I have about that? It's all summed up perfectly. Three friends. So there are three of them. There's, three of them. there's one science enthusiast. And Do you want to know what the other two are? fellow friends, yeah. One of them is an otaku hikikomori. Gotta have one of those. Right, of course. And uh, the other one is his childhood friend. Phone microwave. Where have you got that from? Hmm. We all know how I feel about time travel. Yep. We don't need to, go, we don't need to <laughs> dig up that dead horse. <laughs> it's fake. I, I... I want to say it's real, just from the absurdity of it. <laughs> It's real. Damn it! <laughs> three, three for three, oh, three Curtis. Nil. That is yeah. outstanding like performance. Yeah. Round of applause. <laughs> um, that, of course, was Stein's Gate. Very, very popular visual novel and oh, anime. I keep meaning to that. Watch is that is well. not my friend. <laughs> uh, it actually, you know what? Like, just really quickly, it it was actually pretty good. It was a multiversal time travel yeah. story right up until the end where they butt fucked it. <laughs> they were like, you know how this has consistency? You know how this is actually being handled quite well? <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Not a fan of Stein's Gate. Seven out of ten. <laughs> 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 Pretty good, terrible ending. Um, well, I hope that everybody else is keeping track of who's on top for the year so far because I'm not. <laughs> Recommendation. I'm
I know that I've been talking a lot this session, but you guys can all just blame Robert because Robert didn't pull his weight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I'll try to keep this one short. Uh, I want to recommend Anohana. Anohana is a 12 episode slice of life supernatural series where um, the main character is in high school and he starts seeing the ghost of his friend who died when they were in primary school. And he's not friends with anybody who was like they had a friend group in primary school, but when she died, the friend group, the friend group kind of disintegrated. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they all yeah. dealt with the grief yeah. in different ways. They were all yeah. really young, and when he starts seeing the ghost of her, it she's like, "You gotta be friends with them again. You gotta like you know reignite the friendship and get the group and the gang all back together." So they were twelve when she died. I don't know how. No, they were younger than that. Oh, he's twelve now. No, no, no. He said he's in high school now. Never said oh, twelve. I thought he said twelve. <laughs> um, oh, she said 12 episodes. 12 episodes, That's yes, the, yes, yes. Um, but they were about seven or eight, I think, ish, when they di- when she died. And she just, like, they were all playing together and they're playing hide and seek, and she fell down into a creek and drowned. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Um, so they all kind of blame themselves in different ways. Um, it's a really good, sad anime. If you want to cry, if you just want to have, like, a real good little cry, it's a good anime for that. It's really touching. Um, and. It's a story about learning to grieve properly and not let it ruin your life. And um, yes, yeah, like the, the, the main crux of the story is him trying to get back in contact with his old friends and where they're at now and the ways that they've dealt with or are currently dealing with what happened. Um, that's really it. That's it. That's what the show is. It's got really. It's done by Kyoto Animation, same people who did. Uh, uh, Violet Evergarden and Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Oh, cool. um, so nice, subtle, like per- interpersonal interactions with the animation. It's really good. I got it on Blu-ray. That's how good it is. That I bought it with money, wow. with real money. That is, um, that is good. Just watch it and cry, and just like yeah, like actually cry. Don't just be like, oh yeah, I'm a man. I don't cry. Uh, you're heartless if you don't cry in this. Uh, <laughs> and I'll have to get Kingdom Hearts to slay you. <laughs> how recent was this? This is a, th- uh, I think it's 2012. It's pretty. It's a pretty yeah. well re- well re- received show. Um, what was it called again? Anohana. Anohana. I can't remember what the English name is. Um, but yeah, there's a movie. Don't watch the movie. The movie is just a summarization of the 12 episode series, and right. it's just you don't really get like the super sad bits that happen. Yeah. Um, because they, they do the thing with like this is what this person's been up to, and it becomes that person's episode. Yeah. Um, and there's the whole question of like, is he actually just hallucinating, or is there a really was she actually a ghost? It's all very good stuff. Uh, nice and short. Let's move into the wrap up. And now we're wrapping up, and it's the wrap up song. I rhyme wrap up with wrap up. And then I, I, I cuddle a pup. It's going to be the new wrap-up. <laughs> the new wrap-up rap. Don't change the thing. No, it'll be different every time. Because oh, the whole appeal of my good rap skills is the freestyle. Right. I'll get better. Got to practice. Yeah. Nice. Um, On your way up from the bottom. I will pierce the heavens with my wrap-up <laughs> raps. <laughs> Uh, do I know that um, I know that we've had some a lot of comments on the YouTube yeah anything that we want need to talk about on the podcast um, uh, yeah I just wanted to to, uh, to call attention to Martin's in- insight into the uh, Utena and such the um, she's got some fantastic insight into the uh, the height uh, that's that's explored she talked about the uh, the up versus down of Utena the fact mm. that the castle is floating above and the, the tower that Akio lives in is right at the top of the tower and the student council is towering above the city and stuff. Uh, and then there's the basement that's, that they go down yeah. to in the elevator. Right, yeah. And there's that whole sort of dichotomy that we hadn't really talked about yet. So there's, things like that. Fantastic insight. Yeah, there's, it, there's a part of, this is a huge part of the appeal is the intense amounts of like what thought it thought has gone into a lot of the show Mm -hmm. i don't know if it's gone into everything because there was the cow episode but (laughs) where the care is it's noticeable yeah so it is good and it's good to have somebody to point it out to us i would like to dig deeper but we're in the middle of the show and if i dig any deeper then i'm going to find spoilers and i don't really want that yeah i've had that problem already anything that's upcoming or not since that's good but if you dear listener 
would like to get no you're not a dear listener you're a friend or you're a foe let us know which one you are by commenting on youtube or reddit or any other kind of social media that you can possibly think of um we're active on all those we check them or you can email us directly at kyfcayac at gmail.com that's kifkayak at gmail.com um Next week, we'll be watching episodes 22, 23, and 24 of Revolutionary Girl Utena. But until then, I have been your anime astrophysicist, Joel. I was your anime amateur astronomer, Robert. I was your anime astronaut, Curtis. Truth and forever, kissing love and true your heart.